Hi, this is uh, Larry Johnson, a professor at Texas A&M University in the College of Veterinary Medicine. We'll be talking about uh, some medical histology for the next few series. This particular presentation is on cells, tissues, and microscopy. It has two parts. The first part has to do with the preview of ultrastructure of cells, uh, the preview cells, tissues, uh, organs, and organ systems. The second part has to do with uh, overview of a light and electron microscopy, the preparation of specimens so you can view those with electron and light microscopy, uh, how to stain them so that you can visualize different parts of the cell, and a little bit about section orientation. Uh, it's important to be mindful that the orientation uh, makes things look differently than they really are. Enjoy. Medical School Histology, Part 1 of Introduction to Cells, Tissues, and Microscopy. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson from Texas A&M University. I'm a professor in veterinary integrated biosciences. Today we want to give a little preview of cellular ultrastructure, the fine components of cells, and preview cells, tissues, and organs. Part two, we'll talk about different types of microscopy, preparation of specimens, and a section orientation. Now protoplasm is living substance. The simplest unit of protoplasm is a cell. In fact, some animals only have a single cell. So the simplest unit of life is a cell. Tissues are groups of cells with the same general function or texture. Texture equal tissue, texture. Nerve feels different from connective tissue. And there's four types of tissue, muscle, nerve, epithelium, and connective tissue, and we'll talk more about those today. Organs, when you have two or more types of tissues together, working together to make one unit in function, skin, kidney, uh, intestine, uh, all those are organs. Organ system is where you have several organs that have one general function, a respiratory system, digestive system, reproductive system. So the simplest form is a cell, multiple cells with a similar function is a tissue. Different types of tissues together makes an organ and several organs make organ systems. Here we see a cell composed of a nucleus and cytoplasm on the outside of the nucleus, including the cell membrane. And next, you have the tissue. When you have uh, more than one cell of the same type, you come up with the tissue, this epithelium in the, in the liver, and then the organ. This is an organ where you've got more than one type of tissue. You've got connective tissue, you've got epithelial cells, you've got muscle. And then when you have multiple uh, organs, like in the digestive system, here we see uh, the, the liver and we see the gallbladder, all part of the multiple organs uh, in uh, an organ system. Now, in 1660, Robert Hooke looked through a primitive microscope at a thin piece of cork. So he would look at a little piece of cork. He saw a series of walled boxes that remind him of tiny rooms sailor uh, occupied by monks so monks lived in these little, little tiny rooms uh, and then he count, coined the word cell from cellular which is the name of those tiny rooms and we can see those cells of a plant here uh, on the right and you can see the little boxes that he saw uh, which he coined as cells now animal cells do not have cell walls like plants uh, however, the cells are the building blocks of life of both plants and animals. Now, cells are composed of a nucleus, and here we see the nucleus here in green, and the surrounding stuff that is the cytoplasm, and here we see the cytoplasm all around through here. Uh, this is keratin uh, filaments that we see, which are intermediate filaments, which, uh, you know, just inside the plasma membrane of the cell. But we can see here again that the nucleus and various organelles. Uh, one of those organelles is a Golgi apparatus that we see here with a series of pancakes with vesicles coming from it. 
and then a series of flattened sheets uh, with ribosome on there, this uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then we have the nuclear envelope with nuclear pores, uh, a nucleolus, which is inside the nucleus, uh, lipid droplets, mitochondrion, and then we see the double wall of the mitochondrion, uh, lysosomes or another organelle in the cell. Uh, here's a rough endoplasmic reticulum, but this is smooth endoplasmic reticulum as it has no ribosome on its surface. Centrioles are composed of microtubules inside there. So these are the ultrastructural features uh, of the cell. Now the nucleus, and here we see the nucleus, there's a nucleolus, there's another nucleus here, and here's another nucleus here. Uh, and the condensed chromatin is known as the heterochromatin, the dark part that you see there. Uh, however, the euchromatin is the lighter chromatin that we see in through there, dispersed, actually being uh, translated. So the nucleolus, as we can see uh, here, is a nucleolus here and here and here and here and here of these cells. This is uh, the nucleus right here, nucleolus. Again, the nucleolus of a cell and the metabolic activity of a cell is somewhat depicted by the nucleolus. If you have a, a lot of euchromatin and very large nucleolus, you have a metabolically uh, active cell. In some cells, like if you cut an axon, the size of the nucleolus can increase by 50%. So the size of the nucleolus is important because the nucleolus is where ribosomal RNA is produced. And so you need ribosome to be able to uh, make things uh, in the cell. In fact, that's the initial stuff that we see right in through there. Uh, this nerve cell uh, is uh, actually ribosomes. Now, the, the cell is composed of a nucleus, as we said, the major uh, component, and then a host of organelles, uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, cell membrane, nuclear membrane, uh, and there's three major classes. You've got the membranous organelles. There are common structures, the metabolic function. Cells can't live without it. The cell membrane, rough ER, smooth ER, mitochondria, Golgi, lysosomes. So those all contain membranes. Uh, there's also a non-membranous organelle group. Those are the cytoskeletal components, microtubules, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, free ribosomes. And there's also inclusions. Inclusions are expendable. They need not be there for the cell to be alive. However, they are important for the cell to be functional, like a nutrient, glycogen. And there's cells that store glycogen, liver store glycogen, lipid. Other cells store lipid. So it need not be there for the cell to live, but it's very important for the cell to function normally. Pigment. Melanin granules, that's an inclusion, need not be there, but it's very important whenever it is. Secretory granules, so the cytomagen granules of the pancreas is an example, need not be there for the cell to be alive, but it is inclusion uh, in these, and most of these uh, have membranes around them. A lipid does not have, and glycogen does not have membrane around it. So you got membranous organelles, non-membranous organelles, and expendable things uh, inside the cell and all these make up the cytoplasm and the cytoplasm uh, of metabolic active cells reflect an amount of cytoplasm we have there here we see the cytoplasm of these Sertoli cells uh, the long mitochondria that we see in there and here of a lytic cell a lot of smooth in the plasma reticulum uh, and here's a nerve cell this is a nerve cell from there to there these are satellite cells uh, around it but you see a lot of nissle substance, which is ribosomes, as we mentioned before, which gives a kind of bluish tint to it. And here we see in the, in the, in the pituitary, the granules, those are expendables. And they need not be there, but they are the secretory granules uh, themselves, uh, the inclusions. Now, if we look at the ultrastructure of the cell, we need to keep in mind the magnification of things. Not exactly what magnification. Is it low mag? Is it a high magnification? So if, for example, we just look uh, at these magnifications, you can see this is uh, six times, over six times more than this. And here we can see 
mitochondria. The little dots in through here are mitochondria. And then we go to 13,000, we can see uh, that these guys are mitochondria, and these are much bigger here at 60,000, as you can see. So the mitochondria are getting bigger there. And then if it's again at 60,000, about the same size. And then 80,000, may very big mitochondria we can uh, see there. We can see there's uh, structures inside there. There's uh, actually membranes that we can see in the Christi there. Um, these other two do not have mitochondria in the view, but they do have the plasma membrane. And here you can see the typical plasma membrane uh, or just a membrane that we see in the, in the cells. And it's not, uh, you can't see the trilaminar structure of the cell. These are actually two different uh, plasma membranes here. This is of this cell and this is of that cell. But here we can see the trilaminar structure of a single membrane at this magnification. Also, if you look at ribosomes, these are ribosomes here, they're quite big. You can see the different units of the ribosomes here. Here we can see the ribosomes here on the refinitive plasma reticulum making it ref. There's a Golgi apparatus in through there, another one there, mitochondria in here. And here we can see microtubules, microtubules here free in this cell. And then these are the microtubules here. And so are these. These are microtubules of the centrioles. And these are labile microtubules that are attached to the centriole. See the difference in size in this thing and that thing? Where the magnification uh, has increased uh, there. So the magnification is important. Is it low mag, high mag, uh, what you can uh, see. So you can see mitochondria, you can see the Golgi apparatus, you can see lamellar structure in the mitochondria, you can see the nucleus, there's a nucleus here, a nucleus, these are these lymphocytes in through there, and then these are uh, monocytes uh, that we see there. These are red blood cells developing uh, in through here, and there's a nucleus, so that's heterochromatin and euchromatin. Heterochromatin, euchromatin uh, that we're seeing uh, in these cells. Now, as I mentioned to you, the smallest unit of life is a cell. Protoplasm and lithium substance, the smallest unit is a cell. When you got multiple cells doing the same function, that is a tissue. And there's four different types of tissue. We got epithelium, and that's what you see in the neighbor. You see, in, you look at the epidermis, uh, which is the uh, the outer layer. Connective tissue, the dermis. Below the epidermis is connective tissue. The white of the eye is a place that you can see uh, connective tissue. Muscle, you can't see muscle any place and nerve as a rule you can't see nerves unless you get into the tissue itself if we start with epithelium epithelium covers organs it lines viscera that is uh, it's able to make junctions with you adjacent cells and that makes a lining it lines these uh, blood vessels that we see in the heart and the rest of the body uh, it is also the secretory cells of glands so it's what produces milk, uh, saliva, uh, pancreatic juices, uh, different uh, body fluids uh, are produced by epithelium. Uh, epithelium always sits on a basement membrane and here we can see with a special staining, this is PAS staining, periodic acid shift staining. And so this is the height of a cell from there to there and this is a basement membrane that it sits on. This particular one has a brush border, uh, amplified surface area you see there, which is also PAS positive. So this is the height of the cell from there to there, this is its base. Uh, if it's just one cell layer, we call it simple, here and here. But if it's more than one cell layer, we call it stratified. So here we see stratified uh, epithelium. And the cells are always attached to one another by these junctions, and we have different types of junctions. You have spot well junctions, uh, you have attaching junctions, and you have occluding junctions that prevent things from coming through. That's why you can make a lumen. A lumen is being a cavity uh, that is created by the lining up of cells uh, and held together by these cell junctions. Uh, stratified squamous epithelium stratified is one layer of squamous is flattened cells, blood vessels, 
uh, covering organs, you have these flattened cells, simple squamous. Stratified squamous is like the skin, the epidermis of the skin. The top cells are flat like these, but they have more than one layer and they do not all touch the base, the basement membrane. Again, each one of these epithelium sits on the basement membrane. Uh, there's also simple cuboidal, that is they're simple, one layer, but they're cubes. Uh, we see those in the kidney, the liver, and many places in the body. Simple columnar, that is if you get more cytoplasm above the nucleus than between nuclei, you see it's about the same between nuclei as above nuclei, then they are column shaped, columnar, simple columnar, if there's only one layer tall, thin, intestinal absorptive cells is one example. There's also a pseudostratified columnar. That is one that everybody touches the base, all the cells, but they all, do not all touch the surface. They do all touch the surface in simple uh, columnar, but they do not in pseudostratified columnar. Use it, this is in the respiratory system that we find that type of thing. There's also transitional. Transitional is uh, stratified in nature into more than one layer, uh, and the cells on the surface kind of have a scallop, pictures like uh, appearance, because they can stretch, and you find that in the urinary passages, so that in the bladder can stretch when it's full, and then uh, contract like this uh, whenever uh, it is uh, uh, not extended. Also epithelium, I uh, have uh, specializations on the surface. Here we see very long microvilli, which amplify the surface area uh, of these. You may have cilia, which actually move things along, and you have those in the uh, pseudostratified columnar epithelium of the respiratory system. And so again, you see the PAS positive base of the cell, the nucleus of the cell, and here's the apex. And these uh, villi have carbohydrates on the surface that is what is standing with the PAS positive. Also the carbohydrates is what makes the basement membrane stain as well. If we look at uh, Hagen's body whorls, uh, we can see some structures. Here we see skin and in the skin we have the epidermis or epithelium is what we see. This is a stratified uh, squamous epithelium which covers the skin and below it we have connective tissue. Connective tissue is what makes your belt a strong connective tissue of skin is thicker in a cow than it is in a horse. That's why you have cowhide as belts and not uh, horse hide. Connective tissue, it functions as a histologic lube. It binds the other tissues uh, together. It connects uh, the different cells. So it, it is a connective tissue below the epidermis. It's the dermis that we see. Specialized connective tissue could be blood cells, cartilage, and bone. Now, uh, connective tissue differs from epithelium in that a main component of connective tissue is the extracellular material, that is what's outside the cell. In epithelium, there's not that much extracellular space between them because the cells are attached by junctions. Not so in connective tissue. In fact, loose connective tissue have lots of cells and not many fibers. Dense connective tissue has lots of fibers and few cells. So it's just opposite from what you see because in a connective tissue what's important is the extracellular products of the cell. Uh, the collagen, uh, which is what you see in the white of the eye when you look at your neighbor, or what's in the ligaments, bone to bone and tendon muscle to bone. And then we see bone, a calcified matrix, a few cells trapped in a lacuna is what we see in bone. And here we see a connective tissue. These are, are fibroblasts. And then you can see there's a lot of interstitial space in between there. And it's these cells. So this would be more dense connective tissue. And this is less dense because these are the fat cells. More cells, less dense is what we have cartilage and bone and here we can see bone and at the end of bone we have cartilage uh, even in the adult so again if we look at these body world specimens you can see this is an individual that's 120 pounds and this guy is uh, 
is 300 pounds. You can see the, the fat, the position on it, which is connective tissue. So fat is connective tissue, and that brings us to muscle. There's muscle in the neck that move the muscle. Muscle function is to generate contractile force, and that's what you see, a host of contractile, a high concentration of contractile proteins acting in mycin. And sometimes they are arranged diffusely, like in connect in a smooth muscle, or in sarcomeres, in where you see these lines in between these are sarcomeres that, that we see. These lines here are in a chelated disc but where the cells are attached to one another in in a cardiac muscle. There's three basic types of muscle. You have skeletal muscle, which are the larger muscles, multinucleated cells, several and a nuclei located in periphery. Then you have cardiac muscle, which are branch cells, smaller cells, and usually one or two nucleus per cell. And then you have smooth muscle, the smallest of the smooth muscle the cells, and um, they actually have a basement membrane uh, around them, but it's homogeneous cytoplasm. So uh, here again, we can see uh, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and smooth muscle. There is another type of contractile cells, and this is the myoepithelium. Uh, we see these around sweat glands that squeezes that, and they also squeeze the milk uh, from a cow. So muscle, we have smooth muscle. Uh, here we see smooth muscle cells that are kind of cigar-shaped, and the nucleus is in the periphery. Uh, those are aligned the viscera, blood vessels, uterus. We don't have control of the contractions of those. Cardiac muscle is a striated muscle that is it has striations that we see in it, associated with the heart. And then the skeletal muscle uh, are the ones that have the nuclei on the periphery, multinucleated cells for locomotion of the body. And here we can see in one of the body world specimens whether the, the muscle has walked out of the skeleton uh, and that brings us to smooth muscle that we have in the gut. Uh, and, and what regulates the smooth muscle in the gut is a nervous tissue. So these are ganglion cells. There's one right there, one right there, one right there. Uh, in the connective tissue, surrounded by, by muscle that we see there. So nervous tissue specialized for transmission, reception, and integration of electrical signals. That's what muscle. And you have the different types of, of nerve cells. Don't be worried about that right now. When we get the nerve, we'll talk about that. Neurons are large, excitable cells with long processes. We may go from the spinal cord to your tip of your toe. Dendrites and axons. Axons is where it comes from the cell body. Dendrites go into the cell body. And that is important. Sometimes you have collection of cells. Uh, sometimes uh, these nerve cells produce hormones. Ganglion cells are support cells. Of the, so you have ganglion cells that support, support the nerves. Nerve cells, collections of neuro, neuron cell bonds. It could be myelinated axons, it could be unmyelinated axon. Uh, nervous tissue composed of a central nervous system, which is a spinal cord and the brain, uh, but they also may go out into the peripheral nervous system. You may even have groups of of cell bodies surrounded by satellite cells as we see here. This is a, a cell body. There's a nucleus, there's nucleolus, there's a initial substance that we see that's of the ribosomes. Uh, it's what we see in clusters of ribosome uh, found in a lot of organs. It's, so you have regulation of that organ, like in the gut. Regulation of the smooth muscle is by the nervous tissue that's right in the gut itself. And here we can see a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system coming off of the central nervous system of the body world uh, excellent specimens. Now where are the different types of tissue? Epithelium. The outer layer, the epidermis, uh, is uh, epithelium. The eye has epithelium. Glands, salivary glands, the glands are epithelium. The tongue, the surface of the tongue, again, is epithelium. Uh, in the human, where do we have it? Of course, we have it in the eye. We have it in the nasal cavity. Uh, we have it in the epidermis. We have it lining cavities of the brain. Line the cavities of the body, we have epithelium. 
connective tissue is the dermis. Connective tissue is bone. Connective tissue is the casing, the capsule around uh, organs uh, or muscle that we see. And also teeth is connective tissue as well. Muscle tissue, of course, there's muscle here. There's also muscle regulate the eye. Uh, there's muscle that regulates erector pili muscle, a smooth muscle that pulls out the hair, makes the hair uh, stand up like a mad cat would do. So that's in your skin itself. And then, of course, the tongue muscle is where we're able to move it. Nervous tissue, uh, you got nervous tissue in the eye. You've got it in the brain, of course. You also have the ganglion cells within the tissues themselves that we talked about in the organs themselves, I should say. Uh, and also you have taste buds. That's nervous tissue as well. In the human, where we have nervous tissue, of course, the brain. We also have it uh, in the eye. Uh, optic nerve is one of those. We have it in the skin. And also we have it in the spinal column, the yellow there. Uh, is nerve. So in conclusions, we talked about the previewed cells, organs, ultrastructure features, uh, and the different types of tissues as well. So we previewed the tissues and organs as well as the ultrastructure. I uh, hope it's useful. Uh, thank you.